Hello, Fremont family. As we open up Psalm 38 today, our question is, have you ever felt like this? Have you ever been in one of those places where pain um, is a part of your life? Guilt feels like a burden that you cannot carry. When it seems that um, everyone around you uh, mocking you, uh, lies being told about you. Have you ever been in a season like Psalm 38? Well, we take comfort from the fact that the Psalms contain these kinds of expressions of all of human existence and human experience. And Psalm 38 is a cry out to God. One of the things that in reading different scholars and commentaries on this psalm that's troubling is asking the question, did God cause this pain? The psalm alludes to that God has, has been the person that has caused this suffering for this individual. And yet these same commentaries point out that Jesus addressed a question like this and the Gospel of John, we read of a story in which people come to Jesus and say, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? And Jesus answers, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this was done so that the glory of God might be revealed. What we take comfort in that story is that Jesus shifts the question away from whether it's sin that caused this pain to the reality that it is out of pain and suffering that, that God's glory and character can be seen. But that Psalm 38 is a troubling psalm, one in which um, the real emotions of human experience get poured out. Have you ever been in a situation like this where you begin to wonder if what you are suffering is the result of something that you did some time ago and that, that God is now punishing you for it? Well, this psalm speaks to that. The book of Job is another answer to the problem of suffering. There we see it is the result of the evil one who has come to test Job. And we see that God allows the suffering, but is not the primary cause of it. But beyond the theological ramifications of Psalm 38, let's focus again on the reality of human suffering and that the Bible expresses it, the Psalms especially express it. And one of the things that I wanted to end with today is this vivid reminder from the psalmist despite the uh, wondering of whether God is the cause and and how deep the suffering is there's there's no health in the psalmist's body and and even the accusations of others are weighing this person down the psalm ends with a cry for help Lord do not forsake me do not be far from me my God, come quickly to help me, my Lord and my Savior. The psalm ends with a declaration of faith and hope that the Lord will still save. And that that language of being forsaken, we might remember that elsewhere the Lord says to his people, I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. And even when it feels like we've been forsaken, our God is sure and steadfast in his love for us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is our help. He is our savior. Amen.